What's your plan for the next two to three years? To climb the highest mountain from each continent, but from sea level. Every single meter to the top. It's so hard coming back home after a long holiday. What's your plan for the next two, three years? To climb the highest mountain from each continent, but from sea level. To climb every single meter to the top. And how come no one's ever done this? <laughs> I think most people have more common sense than I do. <laughs> I come from a very small town in Romania and there's not much to do here and there wasn't for the whole of my childhood so my parents always took us hiking Okay, I'm the one to work on Kitina Care is your child's favorite? No, it's not And why? Nu există așa ceva. e motivul pentru care Alec e copilul de favorit. <laughs> Întrebările astea stupide. <laughs> Check that guy out. Growing up, I wasn't passionate about many things. Until I discovered parkour. This activity hatched a love for training, but also for making YouTube videos. Not long after finishing high school, I ended up moving to the UK. It was tough finding work, and when I did, I ended up doing a job I hated. I was earning below minimum wage and could barely afford my rent. It felt like everyone around me was moving forward with their lives, while mine felt stuck. Until the day my brother came to visit me. On this trip, he brought me Bear Grylls' autobiography. Bear's story inspired me and gave me an idea. I wanted to climb the seven summits, the highest mountain on each continent. For the first time in my life, I had direction and I had a goal. <sighs> if only life were that simple. Despite my grand goal, for the next few years I started veering away from my path. At 22 years old, like most people that age, I was easily influenced by having a good time. I was a dreamer, and this goal required someone that could take action. It would take years of hard work and discipline for me to become that person. I was unreliable, and I was living like I had all the time in the world. Until the day I found myself kicked out on the street for not paying rent in time. That was just the wake-up call I needed. Over the next years, I started getting my act together. I studied to become a personal trainer and saved up to climb my first ever mountain. But most importantly, at the first gym I worked in, I also met Viv, my future wife. So Viv had like a thing for personal trainers, who <laughs> was like, Pfft, that guy. <laughs> he chased me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take for us to move in together? I think it was one month. Well, the reason, the way we justified it logically was that it was going to be cheaper for both of us to live together. 
But in reality, we did it because we really liked each other. And he spent every single night at my place for that entire month. <laughs> and there was no, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember how we ended up climbing together? We were doing lots of hikes together. And then you started doing the crazy ones, like Mont Blanc, by yourself. I remember sitting at home for two weekends. Yeah. Nervously. I eventually realised that I didn't want to be sitting around waiting anymore. That I'd much rather be with you and doing the same thing. Once for her birthday, I booked an entire trip in the mountains and climbed together ever since. During the COVID period, I had time to reflect on my seven summits goal. Over time, these mountains had gained a lot of popularity. It now felt like tour companies were doing much of the heavy lifting. But I didn't want to give up on my goal. So I started thinking about ways I could make it more challenging. This is where an interesting thought came into my head. Did anyone ever climb the seven summits from sea level? Every single meter to the top. I scoured the internet and found that a guy from New Zealand managed to do four of them, but over time seemed to have stopped. I was at a very big crossroads in my life. Choose a regular life or go for this crazy goal. We're about to do one of the most famous and sketchiest crossing glaciers, the hardest Via Ferrata in this area. At the beginning of 2021, I started the YouTube channel as an outlet for my creativity, but also as a long-term strategy to help me get the followers I would need for future sponsorship. I'm always in awe when I see someone with an insane project. Nims, Russ, Kristen. But I always wondered, how did they get there? And how did they sort out the money, training and logistics needed? So I decided to document my attempt at this goal. So Chris, what are we doing today? I am trying to advertise myself. I'm trying to get a few more clients this year to earn a little bit more money. And also trying to save up a little bit because next year, the plan is to do three of the big mountains. Kilimanjaro, Aconcagua, Car, Car. <laughs> I tried to save around 9,000 US dollars to cover the costs needed for Aconcagua and Kilimanjaro like the flights, permits, accommodation, with a little bit extra on top, just in case the budget went over. It's January the 22nd. It's minus five degrees outside. <sighs> Waiting for my client now. Okay, something super important just happened and I want to share it with you. Have a look, that is a thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel. <sighs> After two years, two years it took me to get um, to this number of followers. So our plan to get sponsorship is to basically increase the following on YouTube. And the way that we're gonna do this is by posting a video every two weeks, which essentially means that we're gonna travel every month. Viv and I traveled a lot before, but this was an ambitious plan. We planned on doing one trip a month for eight months. But we didn't even get our first trip before the entire goal nearly fell apart. 
yesterday during Viv's birthday dinner, she turned 29. We were just having a conversation and her brother Andy asked me how I stumbled upon this Dave guy. He asked me if I did Instagram hashtags to ever search for hashtag, for example, C, C2 Seven Summit. And he did it there and then. And funny enough, he found this guy. His name is Satoki, a Japanese guy that already did four of the summits and is going for the fifth one. And I'm not gonna lie, I was devastated. You could see that the mood in the room changed. Everyone went quiet. Yeah. I might have something in mind that I'm pretty sure that none of these guys thought about doing before. And it is pretty crazy. But I don't know. We'll see. We went on our first planned trip of the year to Madeira. I didn't want to rush into a decision, but the whole time we were hiking, my mind was circling around one thing. What should I do about my C-7 Summit's goal? When this New Zealand blog, Dave, stopped chasing it, apparently, I was really happy, but in the same time, I always had this, this fear that someone's going to go and beat me to it. So I developed this want in time to be the first person to do it. And over a year, I kept looking to see if anyone's jumping on the challenge and no one was. And that actually made me very happy, but in the same time, very fearful that what just happened last week might happen. However, I also had the plan B in case this might happen. And that plan is to do C to summit and back to sea level. To climb every single meter up and then descend it. Over this week until I took the decision, it's weird to say I wasn't very excited about the idea, but there was something that was holding me back. And I realized yesterday that that thing was doubt. I actually doubted myself that I'm gonna be able to do it. I kind of realized in the same time that the reason that I want to do all this thing is to challenge myself and to beat that doubt. Because I had that doubt my whole life and it's an insecurity. And the only way to beat it is to go head to head and to see if I can actually do it. The year started with a few tough months. Still nobody called from the posters that I put up, which is actually the first time in a couple of years. But to be fair, it's the first time that I started putting them up from winter. But we did have luck in other ways. I sold my wedding dress trying to help raise some money so that we can buy a drone and my wedding dress got lost in america for a month and they finally found it thank god i honestly don't know many people that would sell their wedding dress just so they can help their husband get closer to their dream it's 7 a.m now i'm about to go to work and i just want to show you what my day looks like for every session that I go to, I always take with me dumbbells. I have about 12 kilos on the bike. That ends up being a workout in itself. Okay. I'll see you later. See you later, love you. Very cool. Very cool. Or that slow and then reach up. These are the type of days that 
it's a bit more challenging to train clients outside because it's sleeping. Cones, mat, the dumbbells, bands, pads, and everything else you need to have a good workout. And we're back home. Ooh, buddy, look at that. You got some chicken curry, some coriander on top. This is one of the ways that uh, I'm saving a little bit of money by not eating out. That's meal prepping for the next few days. Viv, what other ways do we have for saving money at the moment? Barely going out, barely drinking. Over this period, another problem started to come up. I have this heel issue at the moment um, where I just get a little bit of pain now and again uh, after walking long distances, which if you paid attention to the goal so far is not very ideal. Um, and I'm trying to sort it out with strength exercises and uh, doing a little bit of research. But yeah, it just flares up now and again and it makes me a little bit nervous. We're heading to Scotland. This is how our life looks like sometimes. When we work until the last moment and then we're late for the train. There are a lot of skills that I need for the Seven Summits project that I don't have yet. I only camped a handful of times before this trip. It's 6.20 a.m. now. Last night, we were trying to find a place to camp before it got dark. And this whole area is filled with bog. I also never used the stove. We bought one just before we went to Scotland. And I spent ages trying to figure out how to work it, literally, as we were setting off. The gas canister that I bought didn't fit my stove, so we ended up having to eat all of the other cold food that we had left. But instead of getting overwhelmed by all of the skills that I didn't know, I used our trips for the year as learning opportunities. Just came back from an induction. I got a new client. Slowly, slowly, it's paying off. Since February, we've been traveling every month, once a month. And today I want to show you how one of these travel weekends looks like. Everything is ready to be packed. Should really move my underwear out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> let's go again. <clears throat> Just need to put everything into the backpacks later. Got my cones ready. We're at the first session setting up. Onwards to the next sessions. Quick AK run now before going home. Packing the bags. Dun, dun, dun. Ta -da -da. Working on the way to the airport. We just got in now. Uh, uh. We need to find somewhere to get some food now. Tomorrow morning we have a mountaineering course. Nice, Viv. <laughs> Come on. How's this view treating you and this coffee? I love Chamonix. This whole Via Ferrata is meant to last about three hours and a half. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit concerned. Focus on the feet, don't focus on the draw. I can't tell you how bad this is. I was shaking watching your cutting pressure, but you were like... That was horrible. <laughs> I really hope that the one tomorrow isn't this bad. <sighs> Wow, it's wobbly. 
Why did I get onto this after yesterday? Finished our mission in Chamonix. We're gonna take a bus and head now to Geneva. Cheapest hotel that we found for Geneva Airport is actually in France, about 45 minutes away. It gets even better, there's also a field. <laughs> When are we next here? Okay. When's that? Same. When the coffee is too expensive in Switzerland. We woke up at 4.30 a.m. today. Had a two hour delay to our flight. So here I am, back to work. This is how I uh, usually spend most mornings and evenings. At the moment, I'm doing the sea to base camp part of Kilimanjaro of the trek. How I'm doing it is by averaging 35 kilometers a day. So we made the plan to climb Aconcagua and Kilimanjaro starting January and February the following year. What I thought was challenging when I was planning Argentina and Chile was finding these camping spots along the way but over there there was actually google street view whereas here there's no street view uh, in tanzania so i can only rely on the satellite images that i'm seeing Come booking completed successfully the moment i bought my flights things started to feel very real. I guess I'm going to South America <laughs> to climb the highest mountain from sea level <laughs> to the summit and back to the sea level. Oh! Mountaineering season is upon us because London's flat. And then I do some backpack weighted carries around Richmond Park. If you ever saw Dragon Ball Z, In June, we planned to climb some of the highest peaks in the Alps. We wanted to climb both in Italy and Switzerland. However, we looked at renting a car and the price for the car for nine days, and this is the smallest car I'm talking about with the cheapest company, <laughs> no luxuries, <laughs> was 600 pounds. So we came up with an unusual solution. Over the last two days, we did all of our missions with 20 kilos and on our backs each because we crossed with everything from Italy to Switzerland on foot and over the Alps. Over nine days, we did eight peaks over 4,000 meters. This trip was meant to be a sort of test to see how our bodies do eventually for next year, January, February. But we didn't stop there. Three weeks later, we were in Georgia, climbing one of its highest peaks. We're getting close to the summit of Kazbek, third highest mountain in Georgia. And it's crazy to think that from here, we can see Elbrus, the highest mountain in Europe. Over these two trips, we managed to get six films and our first viral video. Uh, what message did you send me this morning? <laughs> we got to 2,000 subscribers. 2,000 subscribers! Who knew that hard work and losing your weekends would pay off? <laughs> <laughs> Today I had a session with a friend of mine who's a physio. He gave me a plan to address the tightness and the pain that I have in my left heel. The physio said that because I have a job in which I'm standing up the whole time, I just need to not have so much weight on my heel. And that is probably the hardest thing now. Uh, I'm not running for like a month. I'm just doing the strength exercises and for as much as I can, I'm 
just taking the weight off my leg. Today I'm pretty stressed. And it's not about what's happening next year, about the goal. What's making me stressed is all the things that I have to do and Viv also has to do. All the things that we have to buy, the training, the heel. Suddenly time felt like it was speeding up and the goal was getting closer, fast. 6.15 am now, setting up for a session. It's now the middle of September. These are the last, last few weeks. Well, there's still light outside at this time. It's been two months now since I've been doing the heel rehab and it's going very slowly. Improvement is slow. The thing that's wrong with my heel is called Achilles tendinopathy, which is an inflammation of the Achilles tendon. And the recovery time for this is six months, but can be up to a year as well. And I would lie if I would say that this thing isn't concerning me at the moment. park that I have my first session in. The session is at 6.15 am. It has no lights inside and it was okay during summer but now it is completely dark. We continued on our last couple of trips for the year while still trying to keep the costs down. Sometimes it worked why do you have a helmet on your head in the airport? Not paying for extra luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and other times it didn't. I received an email from the car rental company telling me that there were damages to the car. Due to some problems with the insurance that we had, we lost 500 pounds. 600 euros. But at least some things were looking up. I'm going to have an online session with my physio friend right now to progress the training. I feel a lot less pain in the heel. We just came back from Slovenia and I feel like I could handle the distances that we did over there and all of the inclines and all of the intensity a lot better. So... Whatever it is. I feel like Are you losing the world to do? I have been on so many websites trying to find cheap shit and nothing's cheap. I know. <laughs> I know. Get me now that sale. Viv. Yes. I am so nervous. <laughs> if they don't fit, there's no way I can return these. Because I ordered them off eBay. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Look at that. We started buying all of the equipment we needed. And try to sell the old equipment we were replacing. Look at my wrapping action. Viv and I are returning parcels now for days. And sending parcels to eBay. I finally got a new mountaineering jacket. You should see the one that I was wearing before this one. <laughs> Time! Who's warm, huh? Who's warm? Please go. 
we're slowly starting on the process of getting rid of things because eventually we're leaving London for good. Hey. This wasn't an easy decision, but over time we realized that we couldn't afford to pay rent for the months that we were away. Hey. There you are, my friend. This is your new TV. Oh, <laughs> oh thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm happy. Yeah, Bye. perfect. Have a good one. After our last trip, things went into overdrive for us. In those last three months, we were working non-stop and spent every single moment of every day preparing for this goal. Until. So yesterday, one of my clients asked me, how am I feeling physically about this whole trip? And without battering an island, I was like, great. But in reality, really shit. I injured my back. It might not show on camera, but stress started to take a toll on our bodies. Viv injured her knee after the Slovenia trip. And I had an old back injury that started to play up. There isn't much time to panic because I'm seven weeks away from the starting line. At the moment, I'm trying to get a hold of my head and I keep telling myself that I'm gonna make it better until the starting line. But I have to say, it's really difficult when every single person that I'm meeting now is saying, aren't you excited about January and February? Aren't you excited about next year? As part of my training, for the last two months, I plan to do heavy backpack carries for long distances. So this is the first backpack carry that I'm doing for training. In that, there's a whole of four kilos. But the weird thing happened after my first weighted carry. My neck started to hurt. And for the first two weeks, I forced myself to ignore it. But it wasn't going away. I'm currently out on a walk. I'm doing a 15K walk. And as you can see, I'm not wearing a backpack. This is because I strained my neck a bit and I'm just trying to be wise. The non-stop work, training, filming and traveling seem to have done a number on both of our bodies. I saw a physio in those last three weeks who told me one of the facet joints in my neck is irritated and that's what's causing the pain. Most of it will go before we leave anyway. It's just what his work stuff and all our gym yeah. stuff. This was our last home in London. And now a chapter of our lives is over. Yeah, it is not. So we moved in our Airbnb studio for the last three weeks that we're in London. The physio gave me rehab exercises that I did religiously in a desperate attempt to fix my neck last minute. I couldn't even carry a two kilo backpack without my neck hurting. It is roughly 24 hours until Viv and me no. split, no. <laughs> split no. apart. No. Um, I'm gonna go to Romania for, ow, 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 jab, 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 <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Slit you on the shoulder. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be two weeks until we meet um, at the start of the mountain in South America. I'm actually gonna cry. No, don't cry. <laughs> don't, cry. Don't, don't cry, don't cry. It's gonna be okay. You're excited? 
I'm excited. The last two months have been very frustrating because they've been riddled with injury and it wasn't so much a matter of like uh, oh my god I'm gonna go and do these mountains now I'm excited to push myself towards it it was more a matter of can I I went to Romania to spend Christmas with my parents before flying out to Chile. All the while, I kept rehabilitating and doing what training I could. I wasn't letting go of hope. I woke up this morning and literally just opened my arms and stretched and the whole right side of my neck absolutely seized up and I have very limited movement on my right and just like a lot of pain doing normal normal movements and I'm thinking like of all of the things that we spend money on and like am I gonna be able to do this and you can imagine all of the places that your your mind starts going to and I just don't know and I'm just gonna literally just carry on with everything that I have planned I don't honestly know if I'm going to be able to complete what I set out in January and February. The only thing that I do know is if there's any chance for me to be able to do this, I need to change the question from am I gonna be able to do this to how am I gonna do this I need to commit a hundred percent and not have any sort of doubt in my mind to the question is it gonna happen I need to make it happen regardless and I think only with that mindset am I gonna be able to do this And so, in peak uncertainty and fear, I set off. Two months ahead of me, a distance of 1,300 kilometers and over 12,000 meters of elevation. Not knowing if I'll be able to make it. Not knowing if I could even walk the first day's distance. not knowing but goddamn willing to try